Hi, this is Dante Highwater, and I'm going to read the prelude to The Conduit. It will be chopped up in in, uh, in parts. I'll do part one, and then I'll do part one, uh, part two tomorrow, and uh, and then keep going until it's done, and then go into chapter one. All right. Prelude. I didn't know I was a conduit until I turned 16. Even then, I just ignored it. Charles T. Appleton. It all began when I lost my virginity to a woman that was five years my senior. We met in college during my informable years. Lauren donated much of her time in helping ease students to college life. The fickle hands of fate placed us together by having her assigned to me. She showed me around campus pointing at this and talking about that as we strolled the campus grounds. I remembered the color of the sky that day. It was a deeper shade of blue than before. I listened to Lauren in a dizzy daze when, when she spoke, watching her lips curve and bend with every word she uttered. Never in my years had, had I, I felt a spell that came over me until that day. I lost myself in her dark brown eyes, seeing myself as a child lost in the confusion that I've never felt before. She stripped me naked by the weight of her stare. Even today, I haven't found a woman that pr produced that same effect on me as Lauren. I guessed from my I guessed from my in from my estimation that I never would. As I write this, I want the reader to remind them themselves of the brief encounters that fate brings to us in some points of our lives. Cherish the times that that's been given to you in, with the one the with the ones you truly love. Never let those memories fade. It ends when you least expect it. Over a year, I'm, I'm sorry. A year over. A year move. A year moved on, and I found myself spending most of my time with Lauren. We talked about this and that, but mostly about college life in general. She looked and she took an increase in interest in in the classes that that I was currently enrolling. I was a, I, I currently enrolled in, in at at the time. She then asked me about my home life and asked me about my f future travels for the holidays. The sad truth is I never, I didn't have a place to go. I didn't have a home to lay my weary head. My parents died. Uh, my, my parents are dead, I said with a knee-jerk reaction. I didn't realize until I looked upon her, her after belting out my response. I wholeheartedly begged her for her begged her for her forgiveness as I never as I'm I'm never the one to fly off the handle so quickly it's just something that I rather not talk about I said hoping to smooth the rippled waters Lauren showed me showed me a warmth that I've never felt before her smile was inviting which calmed the uneasiness of my soul she placed her hand inside mine. I'm deeply sorry if, if I was out of line. I just, I just never saw you with anyone else besides me. It must be lonely, she said while squeezing my hand tightly, letting me know that I'm not alone in this world any longer. When the sum, when summer finally showed itself. I didn't have a place to go or friends to share it with until Lauren surprised me with an invent invitation to join her in a log cabin that sits deep in, in, in the woods by the lake. Words couldn't express how excited I felt. Furthermore, moved by, by her want, wanted of that, that she wanted to share her summer with me, a mere child. I cleared out my dorm my dorm room and gave a spare key to a student that needed a place to crash for the summer it it, it appeared that he, that his parents weren't too fond of his choice of dropping out of college he told me that his parents kicked him out followed by a stern ultimatum of either stay in college or find a place to rent 
with his own money. He chose the first and stayed, but in his haste he already gave up his dorm. I handed, my, I handed him my key to my dorm for the duration of the summer, but as luck would have it, a dorm surfaced, and he gladly took it. He handed me back my key and kindly thanked me for the gesture of kindness that I d displayed to him. As I think about the, this account, I can't remember his name, but what I do remember is throwing my duffel bag into Lauren's car hopping into the passenger seat, looking forward to what lays, lays ahead for, for me during summer. Are you excited? Lauren asked me. I smiled, too excited to speak. Lauren laughed and turned up the volume to the car radio. We sang along to an old classic rock station that played Ozzy, Janis Joplin, and the Beatles. We stopped off at gas stations, collecting important things for the trip, like candy, sodas, chips, slushies, and, uh, and of course magazines. I had money in my back pocket just in case I needed anything, but Lauren refused me to use any of it. She told me to place, it, to place the money back in, in my pocket, and I was thankful. When we finally arrived at the cabin, I fell asleep in the car feeling the gentle bumps of the road followed by the sounds that one hears from an open window that that's been cracked open by a by a couple of inches letting in just a, the right amount of air feeling the cool breeze through through my hair enough to place anyone in a deep state of relaxation sleep was what i needed for so long never received until the trip to the cabin or maybe it, it's due to lauren by how she calms my fears and eases my mind when when i'm around her or perhaps it's the needed break from school going out into the woods communing with nature i awoke to the sound of lauren pushing me away hearing her voice shout wake up wake up we're here my eyes fluttered a bit as the brightness of the sun rudely forced my eyes to squint. At first I couldn't see anything as my eyes tried to focus on what was ahead. To my amazement I woke to a large body of water. It's the lake, I shouted. Never been up close to a, to a lake before. The winds blew lazily across it as if it had no place to go. The wind reminded me of, of myself in some ways, causing ripples but never seemed to go anywhere. Is that how my life is going to be? Lazily causing ripples but never more than that? That's when I saw my future in the ripples of, on the surface of the lake. A sudden gust of wind came to, to the car and I smelled for the first time nature and all of its glory. My eyes, my sleepy eyes gave, gave a haziness to the brightness of the day. My eyes then cast themselves to Lauren. Her arms dripped over, draped over the steering wheel as she looked out through the windshield, catching the awesomeness of nature. Isn't it the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen? She's with her eyes fixed on the lake. I parked here so you can see the lake up close. Do you like it? I nodded my head and smiled through my sleepy thoughts. I love it, I said, I replied. I love it, I replied. During the later part of summer, I felt closer to Lauren than, I, than I, I've ever felt. We sat by the bonfire watching the sun disappear into the lake as it always had done before I existed. I then decided to share my secrets with Lauren that I wouldn't share with anyone else. I told her of the death of my parents and how they died in a car accident. I shared, my, I shared with Lauren my deepest fears. I also shared w with, with her my, my life going from one foster home to another, the abuse that I received and, and being there. Tears quickly ran down her cheeks as I continued the story of my life. She hugged me and she held 
me close to her. I placed my ear to her chest, feeling the, the beats of her heart, followed by the sounds of her lungs fall and rise as she breathed. It's the sound of what chi a child hears when, when their mother holds them as, their, as the mother rocks her child back and forth, lulling them to sleep. It's the sound that I've forgotten, but now I have, but now I remember. I pulled my head back, placing my lips onto Lauren's. We kissed, letting loose all that's been pent up for so long. It's okay if you want to. I want you to, said Lauren, with her eyes filled with, with the burning blaze of the bonfire that reflected from her dark brown eyes. Do you? she asked. I simply nodded. We made love under the blanket of stars and didn't stop until the fire fire turned into ambers, then finished the deed on her bed, protected by the warmth of the lo log cabin that sits quietly in the woods near the lake. I felt the joys of the flesh for the first time in my life. I stayed up watching her sleep, feeling lucky that she invited me to stay with her during our summer break. I always, I, I awoke to the smell of eggs and bacon cooking on the stove the sun's rays crept over my face causing a soft golden hue to to everything in the room since i made love for the first time i didn't know how how to act towards her i envisioned myself slapping her ass as i bent her backwards for a kiss which i thought was too much i got out of bed made my way to the kitchen which i saw a plate of a plate made for me Good morning is all she said with she said to me with her matted hair. I nervously spoke with a quick good morning to her as, as she poured orange juice into a glass, but still she said nothing more to me. We left the cabin and cut out cut our summer trip short. I knew that it had everything to do with me. I fell back to sleep during the car ride back to college. I was scared of what Lauren w would say to me, to me once she dropped me off. It had everything to do with my age. I felt the gentle pull of the car as, as it made it stop. I looked out the windshield and saw my building where my dorm is, my dorm room is. My eyes gazed back at her, but this time it wasn't her arms draped over the wind, <laughs> the wheel. I'm sorry, of the car. Her hands covered her face as she cried. I'm so sorry that I took advantage of you last night. I can't see you anymore, and I'm no longer going to be be donating my time with the school anymore. It's for the best. I got. I got out of the car, choked back my tears as I collected my belongings. My, my belongings. I never saw her again after that. Two years later, I turned 18. Two years later, I gave my life to the Catholic Church, studying deliriously to become a monk, which opened a door to a new life for me. Other monks praised my hard work and good study habits i did most of the grunt work since others were up on their years but no matter how hard i i studied i couldn't blot out the memory of my first love lauren at the age of 26 i started to hear rumblings over in new york of werewolves walking amongst the crowds the the other and other fantastic gifts that fought beside the the lichens the likings. The word became known as conduits, people with the ability to talk to the dead. Soon the public became, began to panic, which I expected to happen. A group of people that have access to the spirit world, and I was one of them. I'm a conduit. I knew that I, that I was a conduit at the age of 16 after I made love to Lauren. It was it was when she she broke off all ties to me. I started to see and hear voices from from beyond this world. I believe that my grief caused my gifts to surface. I learned years later, which I will cover in this book. 
At the age of 16, I ignored the voices. I forgot who I was. The seniors above me at the monastery told me to go with God and go in peace, which was a polite way to ignore who I am. The longer I ignored my abilities, the more it haunted me. The voices became more substantial and the visions were relentless until I took control and learned more of who I was, which was impossible for me to do. With my families dead and gone, I didn't have a family tree for me to turn to for guidance and strength. But there were, there were stories of supernatural goings-on at the monastery. I thought it was an excellent time to exercise my birthright as a conduit. I then reached out my hand to the supernatural for the first time. I didn't know where to turn. I just, I, I, was, I was desperate for help. At the age of 26, I learned and got more from the dead than I got from the living. The theory to this is simple. The dead have nothing more have nothing to gain or lose they are already dead with a lack of ambition thus able to help my stories continued to pour out uh, more stories continued to pour out of new york as articles about conduits quickly became the talk of the town some worried that that people with supernatural abilities could perhaps be dangerous which i agree with and to a certain extent it would come it it, it soon came to my attention that there w there should be a, a record of who we are as conduits and how we've ch how we've changed throughout the years so what you are about to hear what you're about to read are the are the written historical records of luminary versus heim heimbreds luminary hybrids versus luminary i'm sorry luminary hybrids versus luminaries the conduits came at the aid of the hybrids first the likings came later one must note the difference between what a luminary hybrid is and what a true-blooded luminaries are they are in fact vampires this disclosure came to the forefront by a writer named Lisa we worked for for the she worked I'm sorry she worked for the Gazette if you are if you are new to the Brotherhood of Conduits I welcome you with open arms it's my greatest joy and happiness that you have decided to read about many many adventures that came over the years if you are a new conduit Please note the following. Each book takes place in a different parts of the world, and some may ha have happened in your backyard without your knowledge. That being said, this event occurred in New York. As I said earlier, luminaries are vampires, but what what is a luminary hybrid? The word did not appear in the conduit lexicon until the early 1980s. It was seldomly known then. It was, wasn't until the 2000, 2020s that the word became readily available. It's thanks to Bradley for discovering the true nature of hybrids. Once a conduit is turned by a vampire, the conduit side increased by the vampiric gene. The conduit gifts are as follows, hearing, seeing, and communing with the deceased. Some con conduits can, may have pyrokinesis, uh, pyrokinetic power, powers, i.e. starting fires with the mind, or the ability to, to move and bend objects with the mind, telekinetic. Some might be empathic, the ability to feel a person's feelings. In some cases, an, an empath may pick up the emotion of said person weeks in advance before said person knows of the emotion. There was a case on this phenomenon back in the late 70s. The word conduit was un, unknown during this time, but 
a case showed up in Texas. A woman walked by a man and she burst into hysterical crying. When the man asked the poor woman why she started to cry, she told him someone from his family will die. Two weeks later, the man's mother fell ill and died. Note, some empaths may have may or may not see the events unfolding in their minds. Unfortunately, names were never obtained, and it's been my own opinion that she in this in this story might have been the very first documented conduit. It's important for me to write all of the, it's oh, I'm sorry. It's impossible for me to write all of the gifts of the conduit, but it bears nothing that under extreme stress one could develop a subclass of skills. For example, please read the accounts of Bradley. The story of New York is a baffling one, which I personally dubbed it as the curious, curious case of New York. Now, let's talk about other things that go bump in the night. And this will bring us to likings. There is a belief that likings and werewolves are indeed different, and some say that w they are one and the same. As I write this, the accounts of such creatures are wrong. The line of the of the werewolves come from the line of Saint Christopher. It's believed that God made these remarkable beasts as guardians as of of the paranormal. It's been my opinion that likings and werewolves are one of the same. Let's take werewolves from England versus likings from Greece. Lycanthropy. Or, likings are brighter than werewolves during transformation. Compared to werewolves, compared to werewolves have... Uh, compared to werewolves have little to zero control during the transformation period. I find this erroneous. I believe likings and werewolves are, are the same with different names. All knowledge of werewolves come from ignorant, su silly superstition without real complex understanding. Example, the metamorphosis happens during the full moon. I find this, I found, I found the metamorphosis is done moments before the battle. In other words, the change came over them when when it's essential, like being attacked. However, su superstition, uh, supernatural abilities are functional during human form. To learn more about this, please pro refer to Jason at the clan. I hope you enjoy this, and please reread this book as the books are updated as these books update themselves with the magic of the she-wolves. The first interview is is on Blind Joe. I've not, I've talked with him about the changes that he faced when a luminary came and turned him. He's one of, uh, of the hindbred luminaries. I'll end this with great thanks and well wishes. I hope to the youngest of the conduit brethren that uh, that this book gives you light in an otherwise a dark period of life. Just like all things, there is always hope and light in all of our journeys. This book isn't to solve what happened in New York, but it should shine a light on the events of what happened. Take care, Monk. And that's it. That's that's the whole. Th I actually read the whole thing. Um, I hope you liked it. I will read uh, chapter one uh, to you tomorrow. And have a good night. Bye. Thank you.